writer and game designer Robin D. Laws for Palgrain Video. In this Palgrain Video series, my boon compadre and collaborator Gareth Ryder Hanrahan and I are going to try a little formal experiment in role-playing games, and we're going to take a very old idea in role-playing game, which is play-by-mail back in the olden times. Uh, people, myself included, uh, used to uh, get together to play with people by writing them letters back and forth, and you would uh, advance the narrative a certain uh, distance as GM, send a letter to your player, your player would read it, come up with what their character did, send you another letter in return, and you'd go back and forth over time. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make that a little faster, but not too much so, by communicating with each other in video clips that we're going to drop into a Dropbox folder uh, and uh, create a role-playing narrative uh, that way. We're also going to make up the rules as we go along, but they're going to be based on various flavors of gumshoe. Uh, the most obvious one is gumshoe one-to-one, -one, uh, which is for uh, one player and one GM, but that assumes that you have a shared block of time together that you can play either in person or uh, remotely, whereas uh, this is going to be more of a back and forth, so uh, we may need to make up different rules uh, as we go along. Uh, in so doing, we'll probably also be drawing on regular standard uh, multiplayer gumshoe, and perhaps even I might steal a trick or two from uh, Crickshot gumshoe, which is my new variation that appears in the Yellow King role-playing game. So this will be both a story that will develop over time in a series of videos with these clips cut together, and also an experiment in the form. And we're going to uh, see which rules, if any, are actually necessary to do this. Uh, so, Gar, I'm going to set you up for this uh, by asking you to give me just a couple little cues, and then we'll get rolling, creating a story. So, uh, Gar, what I would like f from you now is, first of all, the title of the adventure. And uh, those of you who uh, think about s such things uh, know that this gives Gar considerable um, power, uh, perhaps a covert power, over the direction this is going to go. And secondly, uh, Gar, without deciding anything else about your character, what I would like you to do is to explain why they are driven to solve mysteries, what makes them tick and what makes your character move forward into the narrative that we're about to create. This is Gareth Swedra Hanrahan for Pelgrim Video. Uh, hi Robin, thank you very much for inviting me to this little experiment to while away the time while we're all locked down in quarantine. Um, you asked me to pick the title of the adventure. Um, being ridiculously indecisive, I've decided to turn to Bibliomancy. I've picked a random book off my bookshelves. It turned out to be Tristram Hunt's The Ten Cities That Made an Empire. I am now going to live on camera, so to speak, open it up and find a suggestive or evocative uh, title for the adventure from the random page. So, here we go. Right. And uh, it's from the section on Bombay, and there's a nice um, Rudyard, Kip Rudyard Kipling quote here. And from that, um, I shall pick this, uh, the title Mother of Cities. From the poem, uh, Bay, Mother of Cities to me, for I was born in her gate, between the palms and the sea, where the world end steamers wait. So, thank you for that. And my character shall get involved in mysteries because he is especially impetuous and leaps before he looks and investigates before thinking, hang on, I probably shouldn't investigate that. So uh, let's see where this goes. This has been Gareth Weider Hanrahan for Pelgrane Video. So, Gar, uh, the mother of cities. Your character is indeed in the mother of cities and the mother of cities is named Aberdant. Uh, you are standing on a pier uh, and it's this vast, bustling metropolis. Uh, Aberdant is the oldest continuously inhabited city in the explored galaxy. And uh, you are part of the small human community who lives in this city. And it's a beautiful day, You're looking up at the vermilion sky. The uh, clouds are just sort of wispy and uh, trailing off the uh, uh, Ether ships up in the air are, are the, the, these are the spaceships. They're, they're quite uh, beautiful and impressive and they're gleaming 
uh, in the light of the two suns. And uh, you're also looking at the paddle boats on the vast uh, turbid uh, river that uh, wends uh, through the city of Aberdant. Um, and uh, you are, uh, as I said, part of a small human community, and, and you have uh, a tediously obligatory task that brings you uh, to the pier. So I'd like you to describe that, explain your tediously obligatory task. And as you do that, I think you should also describe your character, tell us uh, uh, who he is, what his name is, what he looks like. Um, and we're going to learn a bit more about your character because we're going to find out about his reaction when he is jostled. Uh, he's standing looking at this uh, beautiful scene, he's distracted momentarily, and he's sort of hit from behind uh, by uh, a, a a, a creature is a solid jostle and he looks around and it's a, a Barunt has, a, has banged into you uh, with his shoulder. He's carrying a big uh, basket full of something or other. And uh, the, the Barunt, of course, are, uh, are big burly fungal beings uh, who uh, some people say they're a little brusque at times, you know, uh, but that may or may not be your feeling about the Barunt, but your current feeling about the Barunt is that one of them just jostled you hard? Uh, so uh, third, uh, let me know how your character reacts to the jostling. Hi, Robin. There I was assuming that Aberdant was going to be a fantasy city, and suddenly I opened up to a wider galaxy. Anyway, um, to take your uh, second question first, uh, my character is called Erdan. And he is um, a messenger, an eye man, uh, for one of the sessile nobles, who are these immobile fungal creatures, I guess, um, who occasionally employ the human underclass as messengers slash mobile cameras. Um, possibly some sort of you know, fungal infection in my brain that lets them, uh, or lets them, a particular patron access my memories or feed new memories into me. My tediously obligatory task is to deliver a letter to one of the things that lives in the river. Um, I don't know the contents of it, but uh, it'd be interesting to take a peek, so I can read the language, because I'm not sure how integrated humans are into Aberdeen society. Anyway, more importantly, that Barunt. Um, being an impulsive sort, and not too happy with my lot in life. Uh, when he jostles me, I shall, um, when I get the opportunity, reach up and knock his basket of stuff into the river, sending his fruits or vegetables or eggs or whatever they are, plunging into the torpid depths. And uh, yeah, that's response number one. So the burnt. Uh, momentarily, he's shocked. He's standing there and he watches as his uh, bundle of stuff goes arcing into the river and he looks at you and suddenly he puffs up with rage and he uh, turns a whole other deep purple color. And it's very clear that this massive creature uh, is a, he, he shouts at you and he says, I have sworn a guess never to accept shenanigans from mammals. And then he draws back his great foot and is about to kick you into the river. Uh, this uh, leaves you with a choice and also uh, some game mechanics. So uh, at this point, I'm going to have you uh, allocate uh, 40 points uh, between your character's general abilities. Uh, these are uh, athletics, composure, fighting, gambling, health, mechanics, Medic, preparedness, sense trouble, sneaking, and vehicles. Once you've allocated those points, you are then going to decide whether you want to just get away from his foot and avoid being kicked into the river, or whether you actually want to engage him in combat and, and genuinely defeat him, or perhaps even do a third thing. Uh, but whatever thing you do, uh, tell me how many points from your uh, general pool that you are spending and uh, roll the die and tell me the result and we'll find out what happens next to Erdan in our next exciting episode of Mother of Cities. <laughs>